Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program comes to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center campus in Oklahoma City. Our uh, program is also part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today uh, comes from the realm of bone and soft tissue pathology, maybe even hematopathology, not to give too many clues away. Uh, the patient is a six-year-old boy um, who was found to have an infiltrative lytic lesion in the femur. But his presentation begins with uh, sort of developing a little bit of a limp and tenderness um, and just sort of a vague sense of uh, discomfort, not really uh, highly painful, but uh, obviously affecting his uh, uh, gait. So uh, initial workup uh, included some plain films, which we see here on the left. And as you can see uh, here, it's not terribly obvious. Uh, there's uh, maybe a little haziness here in the uh, uh, femoral head uh, and around the greater trochanter. And here maybe a little bit of lysis. Uh, the, the margins are not sharp. Uh, there may be a little bit of cortical destruction or damage here. Um, this is uh, kind of a bit worrisome, but maybe not very specific at this stage. Uh, various things were considered. Um, and while they were in the midst of that, uh, things uh, progressed and uh, it was several weeks later before he came back. Uh, a repeat plain film at that time uh, shows a, a really quite progressive lesion with here a clear cortical uh, thickening, maybe some elevation of the periosteum, uh, rims uh, on the uh, indentations on the inner table of the cortex, maybe some early penetration into the surrounding tissues. Um, so this is clearly an infiltrative uh, and fairly rapidly uh, uh, progressing uh, process. Um, so with that, uh, of course, uh, the radiologists get their share and a chance to evaluate these uh, things uh, more carefully um, with additional studies. And here we see the MRI showing that this is uh, uh, quite uh, um, uh, bright on uh, T2 imaging. Uh, and we also see here that the uh, surface of the cortex is uh, reacting and elevating. This may be uh, typical uh, of a, a sort of a Codman's triangle type of reaction, cortical reaction. And here we see the surrounding muscle also showing uh, some uh, edema and uh, secondary changes. Uh, on the axial T1 lesion, uh, again, we see this uh, alteration and variability internally in this lesion, some uh, heterogeneous uh, density um, and uh, variable uh, dark spaces and uh, changes to the cortex, ind indicating there's some cortical uh, damage. Uh, looking at it uh, on the uh, coronal view, we can see that it extends down the marrow quite a ways, this uh, brightness. It does uh, spare the epiphyses, uh, both in the greater trochanter and in the ephemeral head. Um, but uh, the degree of involvement here is uh, fairly significant at this stage. And obviously, uh, comparing uh, laterality, you can see the, the findings quite easily. Well, uh, this brings up the differential of sort of infiltrative margins and bone lesions. And especially in a child, uh, of course, we're, we're thinking about various uh, significant possibilities, Ewing sarcoma. Uh, certainly can present in this age group and have an infiltrative and fairly aggressive pattern. Langerhans cell histiocytosis, osteomyelitis could be progressive in this way, lymphomias, leukemias. Doesn't seem too much like, like osteosarcoma, but a small cell osteosarcoma certainly could have this appearance. And although metastatic disease is not likely in this age group, and certainly myeloma would be extraordinary in this age group, uh, for completeness, I've included those here in the differential uh, radiographically. So um, given its aggressive behavior, it seemed uh, prudent to uh, get some tissue uh, to clarify that differential and allow us to go plan next steps. So uh, here we see a needle core biopsy. Uh, we see some sort of uh, amphiphilic uh, color, heterogeneous uh, nature of this uh, tissue. Uh, a little bit of associated soft tissue, maybe a bone fragment or two. Um, and looking here, we've got a lot of uh, eosinophils. Uh, 
Uh, you can see them as these uh, bright granular red uh, granules here. Um, and so that may have given you the uh, clue right away that uh, likely here we're dealing with uh, eosinophilic granuloma um, and hence the name eosinophilic. Well, let's take a look down at this other fragment and we'll see some of the uh, reasons why it's called granuloma uh, here in the very presence of uh, some nice uh, multinucleate giant cells here associated with the lesion. Now, of course, the eosinophils are not the uh, neoplastic or uh, proliferative cells here, uh, but uh, the, they are attracted by uh, the Langerhans cells. Um, and typically, the uh, Langerhans cells have somewhat pale cytoplasm, uh, ovoid, maybe grooved to horseshoe-shaped uh, nuclei, um, and generally fairly small. Now, you can see the admixed uh, plasmacytic uh, infiltrate here as well uh, in this lesion. Um, we'll have a, a view at another uh, sample from this uh, specimen um, here showing more bone. Um, and uh, you can see uh, here some of the uh, reactive changes in the bone. Here's some of the elevation of the periosteum with a little bit of uh, calcification, new bone formation happening there. Um, and then this other fragment. Uh, also shows that dense eosinophilia that we've uh, been referring to um, with um, some degree of uh, uh, presence of the uh, um, Langerhans cells in here, although really can be quite obscured by the eosinophils as you see here. Um, a clot section, a little bit of that uh, happened to come along with this. Um, and uh, here you see that, uh, not much tissue, uh, but uh, useful for harvesting cells. Um, and as you'll see here in just a moment, uh, when we do the immunohistochemistry on this, um, it uh, is quite helpful. So uh, here's the uh, CD1A uh, immunohistochemical stain here. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a lot of uh, positive reactivity. This is not nonspecific. Uh, um, Staining, this is actual staining of the uh, cells. So this is not just a, a nonspecific staining uh, that you might associate, but you see that it is these ovoid cells. It is cytoplasmic. This is not the eosinophils or neutrophil uh, with uh, native peroxidase uh, staining um, here. This is uh, true positivity. Um, you also uh, may uh, do uh, that on the uh, tissue. Here you can see again, uh, on our tissue fragment, it lights up very brightly with the CD1A, um, and you can come back and take a look at these at your leisure, as I'll provide the link to the digital slides uh, in the presentation topic. Uh, but there you can see it's very clearly positive. Um, uh, S100 also uh, can be useful, but uh, not quite as sensitive. Here you see the S100 stain is really not lighting up very well in this uh, tissue. And that might raise concern. There are, however, um, a few cells here uh, that you'll see um, here at this edge uh, that are staining specifically uh, with the S100 marker, but certainly not the same degree as we see with uh, the CD1A, a uh, far more sensitive and specific uh, stain. Uh, so what is uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis? Well, certainly it is a disease with many names. Uh, and over time, it has carried a variety of monikers based largely on the type of presentation where it's been seen, um, because uh, many people came at this uh, disease from different organ systems and age groups uh, and presentations before we realized that this was a unified uh, uh, disorder. Um, and so initially, Hanschuler Christian disease, Lederer Seewe disease, Hashimoto Pritzker disease, eosinophilic granuloma, these were all uh, identified as uh, differing uh, disorders uh, until we recognized that it had in common this uh, uh, Birkbeck granule as seen by uh, uh, electron microscopy, and it what for adopted the term histiocytosis X. However, uh, with further refinements, we've identified the target cell here as being a Langerhans cell uh, with specific immunohistochemical and uh, molecular markers. 
and uh, hence the uh, more correct name is Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Uh, it is a clonal proliferation of these uh, 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 cells uh, that's most frequently seen in childhood, but can present in other organs and in other settings at, uh, at other age groups, specifically the lung. Uh, most common affected sites include the bone, as in our case, skin, uh, bone marrow and lymph nodes, liver, spleen, of course, uh, but other mucosal sites. And then finally, less frequently in the lung, uh, the central nervous center system and the uh, GI tract. Um, it's evident that this has uh, RAS and MAPK driver mutations uh, that are uh, causing this clonal proliferation. I've uh, already gone over some of the, the immunohistochemistry, but in addition to CD1A and S100, uh, these will react with CD68, uh, BRAF VE1, CD45, CD4, and cyclin D1, um, which can be an important and useful thing because there are a few other things that will react with CD1A, but not with cyclin D1. And it's usually negative for B cell markers uh, and also negative for CD30, uh, which is another entity uh, with regard to anaplastic large cell lymphoma that sometimes enters the uh, uh, differential. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, differential can include, based on the organ, that you may see uh, a number of things. And dermatopathic lymphadenitis, when it's seen in the lymph node, uh, can closely mimic uh, uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, but this disorder is cyclin D1 negative, whereas um, uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis is cyclin D1 positive. Infectious disease, cat scratch, chimuras, juvenile xanthogranuloma, of course, and then the uh, more uh, esoteric histiocytic diseases, Erdheim Chester, Rosai Dorfman, and the rare malignancy, although this is uh, a different age group uh, in almost uh, all cases. Um, so, our uh, final sign out diagnosis today is Langerhans cell histiocytosis of bone. This was a unifocal lesion. The patient uh, should do quite well with uh, relatively uh, modest interventional uh, uh, therapy sometimes even just with curatage or even just uh, slightly disturbing it uh, for biopsy will cause these lesions to regress. Um, but occasionally other uh, treatments may be required. And of course, the, for that, you want to consult your uh, orthopedic oncologist or your uh, pediatric uh, uh, hematopathologist or hemato-oncologist uh, in uh, regards to those uh, decisions. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, case. It's uh, nice to see uh, some pediatric pathology from time to time in my practice. And uh, please uh, like the video and share it uh, so that that will uh, help our channel get further attention. We do appreciate all of our subscribers and hope that uh, you look forward to doing these as much as, or seeing these as much as we look forward to making them. Uh, it is a lot of fun and challenging and helping to uh, keep us uh, sharp. So until next time, Thanks so much for joining me.